Is this the best, most affordable S-Type you can get for the money? Welcome back to The Mix, I'm ABD. Today we're checking out the Sire S7 FM, which is their S-Type, Strat-Type guitar. FM stands for Flamed Maple. This is in their natural color, and it has a red back, which looks real sweet. They actually, seemingly, according to their website, do not make this exact version anymore, starting 2023. Um, the pickup covers, as you can see, are all black from the two single coils to the one humbucker. And according to their website, they won't be doing that anymore. They'll be doing a kind of aged vintage white and then a zebra humbucker. And uh, for the natural, they're going to be doing a tortoise pickguard, um, not the white perloid. But I think they will continue to do the white perloid pickguard on the blue version and on the black version. But they will all have that new color for the pickups. So that's interesting. They've only been around for a short time, Sire, and I feel like they're not that well known of a company. More people might know them for their basses. If you're a bass player, they're uh, exceptional basses that or you might have tried one or you might have heard of them. They have a lot more basses in their range than they do guitars. They've only been making guitars for a short time, just a couple of years, when they finally came out with actual guitars. Before that, they made basses. And this is their jazz style bass, jazz bass. It has a maple neck in this case. This is an ash body and perloid pickguard again. They like their perloid pickguards. And then it has single coil pickups like a jazz bass, but in this case it has an EQ because it's an active bass. It can be played active or passive. Um, two batteries go in the back. They designed these basses in collaboration with Marcus Miller, who's a famous studio bassist, and he really contributed to the guitars what he learned from the many years of playing bass in studios and on songs and it's an incredible bass and this is about two hundred dollars cheaper than a fender player but it has way better specs than you would ever get from a uh, fender in this price range even from made in mexico these are made in indonesia and they're just able to put way higher specs and make way higher quality instruments because of where they're manufactured it's really actually impressive what they're able to do at this price these are like professional quality and they actually both have the bass and the guitar a feature that they actually trademarked a term for. They call it edgeless. It's an edgeless fretboard where the edges are incredibly rounded, especially on the bass. There's a binding, and then there's a ton of rounding that happens. It almost makes it like, like a bat, like a baseball bat. And uh, they do that on both their basses and their guitars. But this is not a review of this bass. I will probably do that another time. It's a review of the S7. Their guitar and, or their guitars, they worked with Larry Carlton, who's a famous studio musician with the plays guitar, um, for years and years, to design the number of different models that they have for their guitars. Okay, well we can go over some specs for this instrument. It has an alder body, American alder. I don't know if that really does make a difference, but they make a point to say it is American alder with a maple veneer. It has that wood binding where the natural wood makes it all the way to the edge and it kind of looks like a binding, um, but it's not your traditional binding. It has a comfort curve here, a deeper comfort curve here than a Strat would, like a Fender Strat, and it has a little bit of a dip in here for a little bit of a, a comfort curve. And uh, again, it has a three-ply perloid pickguard, which looks really fancy. And then it has two single coils and a humbucker, HSS configuration with black covers and a two-point trim with modern saddles and a modern kind of whammy bar. It doesn't have the white or uh, aged white tip on it. It just has it's all silver and it's a push-in. So that's a little different than Fender as well. It's not a screw and it's a push-in and you can tighten it with an Allen key down there which it includes. This is how it came from the factory. I haven't set it up at all. It did come with a floating trim. So the tremolo down here is floating. It's not decked. But the, the tuning stability is fantastic because it comes with locking tuners. They are uh, they're unbranded, but I believe they're just sire locking tuners. And then a roasted hard maple neck, which looks incredible. Really amazing stuff at this price. And then a bone nut, which is cut super well and seated super well. And then there's a finish. There's a gloss on the front of the neck 
over the frets, but there is a satin finish on the back, which feels amazing. It's one of the, the best feeling necks I've ever played on really any guitar, and that's no different than playing a sire bass. So this feels almost even better because it's roasted. This one is just maple. And so the trim does articulate a little different than a Fender trim. It's a little tighter and um, it, it has a different sound, but I like it and you might prefer it over a Fender. And uh, it has a five-way switch, which feels good. It's pretty tight and it has one volume and one tone. So just two knobs. And then another thing that's different is it has the input jack on the, the bottom side there, not on the front face of the guitar like a Fender would. And so really it's very similar to a Strat. It's basically a Strat, but the shape is a little different. And that's one of the things that I don't love about the guitar is the shape um, of the horn up here is a little bigger than a, uh, or, or taller than a, a Fender Strat. And a Fender Strat has a rounded, more rounded body on the corners, and this has a sharp kind of edge, especially on the front where there's the maple veneer. And then on the back, it's a little more rounded, but it's still, it's chunky and it's angular, and it kind of is big, and I kind of feel like it's hitting me in the, in, in the tummy, in, in the chest too much compared to uh, when I'm playing an actual Strat. It just doesn't feel as intrusive. But it has a nine and a half inch radius, so it is like a normal Strat. It doesn't have a compound radius. It's not 12 inches like a Les Paul or something like that. And um, it does not have stainless steel frets, but these are some of the most polished, pretty looking frets I've ever seen for standard frets. They l almost look and feel like they're stainless steel, but they're not. They're super slinky. And again, there's no sharp edges whatsoever because they do that whole rounding process to round the wood and the fret edges, so it's just smooth as butter going up and down. Again, it's one of the best feeling necks I've ever played on a strap. One of the things I don't love about it is it's a it's a heavy guitar. It's 8.2 pounds, which doesn't really sound like a lot, especially if you're like a Les Paul player or if you play heavier guitars, but just the way that it's balanced, um, it's a little head heavy in not the best way. The neck, you can just tell that the neck is heavy. The body is heavy. It's alder, but it's a heavy piece of alder. Um, the maple veneer might be heavy. The block inside, I think, is a heavy block. But but I have not tuned this up in maybe a week or longer, and it stayed perfectly in tune. Uh, the lock and tuners are exceptional, and everything else of the hardware is rock solid. Um, another thing to point out is the tuners are staggered which means as they go up the headstock, they also go down, which keeps the strings pointing this way, the break angle. And so you don't need a string tree. That's why there's no string tree on this. It does have the trust rod adjustment right there on the headstock. It doesn't have the bespoke wheel down here. But yeah, we can plug it in to a tube amp, a Friedman Runt 20, into a V30 speaker to get some tones. We have some pedals on the floor. So let's see what that sounds like. I'm gonna tune it up. So we have no pedals on, but we do have just a little bit of reverb on the post of the amp. So one thing about Sire is I think their pickups are some of the best pickups out there. Uh, so in this case, they are Strat type for their Super Strat type single coil and humbucker. They're matched really well. Sometimes you have an issue when you go from single coils to a humbucker, that humbucker might be way too loud in comparison. So it just isn't a good pairing when you're on stage or you're playing and you switch between those pickups. It just doesn't work because you lose volume and you have to go and quickly change your knobs and things like that. In this case, it works really well. So we're on the neck and uh, here's what it sounds like. With So if you can't tell, they're exceptional sounding pickups. So now that we're bringing the humbucker, you can tell that we get a much different sound, but it's not 
too loud. It doesn't ruin the, the whole vibe of the... Uh... So you can tell it's a pretty honky kind of humbucker. So it's kind of, again, it's meant to match pretty well with these pickups, and I think they accomplished that. So if we go back to the second position, so we're using that neck pickup, and uh, for some pedals, we can try a tube screamer. Let's hear what that sounds like. We can try a rat type distortion. And then back to clean with a little uh, chorus. Back to the single coil. So as you can see, they're great sounding pickups. And uh, that's through a tube amp. We can plug it in now to DI and do an interface with some neural DSP plugins for a little jam. See how that sounds. So that was some tones you can expect from the guitar. Overall, I think it sounds really good. It plays super well. Like I said, it's one of the best feeling necks I've ever played before. The nut is cut super well. The weight bouncing leaves a little bit to be desired. The headstock is a little heavy, and that's because I think of the locking tuners. That's why sometimes I'm not the hugest fan of locking tuners, because they add a lot of weight to the headstock, and it can create that neck dive. I wish uh, it wasn't so sharp on the front, I wish it was a little more rounded, and uh, I don't really love how big the horn is. I feel like it pokes me in the in the chest a little bit too much. But overall, it's a super great guitar. I think Sire makes great instruments. It's really impressive what they're able to do for the money. They make great basses. They make these guitars. They have a newer version of these that are more affordable. This is the S7, and they have a Teletype that's a T7. And recently they just launched some new guitars, um, including an S3 and a T3, so their Strat and their Teletype. Those include a normal maple neck, not roasted maple. They have rosewood fingerboards. They have mahogany bodies, which are definitely warmer and have a different tone, and they have different pickups. And they're uh, about 300 bucks cheaper. And uh, so there's a lot to look forward to from Sire. I think I'm going to get the T3 to review for the channel. So look forward to that if you're interested. The other thing that I didn't mention is there's abalone inlays on the fretboard. It's blue abalone, so it's blue and green, and it looks super fancy and nice. And uh, that's about it. So if you did enjoy that, 
please like and subscribe below. I really would appreciate that. There's more coming, more reviews, more gear stuff, production tips, and things like that. But thank you for watching, and uh, until next time, take care.